Now we will discuss lung trauma. A splinter from a fractured rib can penetrate the lung. Splinter means a broken piece. From a fractured rib, it can penetrate the lung and air can escape into the pleural cavity causing pneumothorax and collapse of the lung because air is present in the lung when it is punctured or penetrated by the fractured rib the air will come out into the pleural cavity and this condition is called as pneumothorax and there will be collapse of the lung it can also find its way into the lung connective tissue from lung connective tissue the air moves under the visceral pleura until it reaches the lung root it then passes into the mediastinum that is from the visceral pleura it will reach the lung root and then it will pass out of the pleural cavity in the mediastinum and up to the neck here it may distend the subcutaneous tissue and this condition is called as subcutaneous emphysema that is when air is present in the neck it will distend the subcutaneous tissues and this condition is called as subcutaneous subcutaneous means below the skin emphysema emphysema collection of air below the skin in the neck this is subcutaneous emphysema Pain and lung disease. Lung tissue and the visceral pleura are devoid of pain sensitive nerve endings. So that pain in the chest is always the result of conditions affecting the surrounding structures. Again I will repeat if there is any problem in the lung tissue or in the visceral pleura there will be no pain. If there is pain it means that there is some problem surrounding the lung tissue. In tuberculosis or pneumonia, for example, pain may never be experienced because tuberculosis can be present inside the lung and pneumonia is the infection or inflammation of the lung. So, lung is involved, there will be no pain. Once lung disease crosses the visceral pleura and the pleural cavity to involve the parietal pleura, pain becomes a prominent feature. So, the pain will be there if there is involvement of parietal pleura, not the visceral pleura. Lobar pneumonia with pleurisy. Pleurisy is the inflammation of pleural membranes. For example, it will produce a severe tearing pain accentuated by the deep inspiration or cuffing. If there is, we will inspire deeply or we will cuff, so there is a severe tearing pain. Accentuated means it will be more noticeable on cuffing and more noticeable on inspiration. Which pain? Which is due to pleurisy because parietal pleura is involved. Because the lower part of the coastal parietal pleura receive a sensory inner innervation from the lower five intercostal nerves which also innervate the skin of the anterior abdominal wall. Because what I am telling you, the anterior abdominal wall and the Coastal parietal pleura, the lower part of the coastal parietal pleura has the same nerve supply. What is the nerve supply? Lower five intercostal nerves. So if there is pleurisy in this area, that is the lower part of the coastal parietal pleura, it will produce pain that is referred to the abdomen because sensory nerve supply is same. This could result in a mistaken diagnosis of an acute abdominal lesion. That is, there is a lesion of parietal pleura, that is pleurisy, but pain is felt in the region of abdomen. Why? Because the lower five intercostal nerves are supplying the parietal pleura and are also supplying the anterior abdominal wall. The nerve supply is same. That's why pain created in one region is referred in another region. In a similar manner, pleurisy of the central part of the diaphragmatic pleura which receives sensory innervation from the phrenic nerve can lead to referred pain over the shoulder because the supraclavicular nerves supply the skin of this region and the root value of the phrenic nerve and the supraclavicular nerve are same. So if there is any problem in the diaphragmatic pleura the pain will be felt in at the region of shoulder. Why? Because the root value of of the nerve supply is same. Phrenic nerve is C3 to C5 and supraclavicular nerves are C3 and C4. So pain will be felt over the shoulder. So pain is referred in case of lung diseases.
Now there can be surgical access to the lungs. Surgical access to the lung or mediastinum is commonly undertaken through an intercostal space. Special rib retractors allow the wide separation of the ribs. The coastal cartilages are sufficiently elastic to permit the considerable bending. This method permits the good exposure of lungs. There can be segmental resection of the lung. As I have told you, if there is any problem in one segment, that pulmonary segment can be resected. A localized chron chronic lesion such as the tuberculosis or a benign neoplasm may require surgical removal. If the disease is restricted to a bronchopulmonary segment, it is possible to dissect out that particular segment and remove it, leaving the surrounding lung intact. Now, this is the last slide. There is one procedure which is called as postural drainage. If there is excessive accumulation of the bronchial secretions in a lobe or a segment of a lung, it can seriously interfere with the normal flow of air into the alveoli. Furthermore, the stagnation of such secretions is often quickly followed by infection. To aid in the normal drainage of bronchial segment, a physiotherapist often alters the position of a patient so that gravity assist in the process of drainage. See here if there is any uh, secretions which are collected or accumulated so these secretions can be taken out by the postural drainage by the effect of the gravity. See here if there is any bronchial secretions in the upper lobe in the anterior apical segment this posture will be adopted to do the postural drainage. Similarly here in the posterior apical segment this posture will be uh, done then anterior segment, upper lobe, this posture will be adopted. Then right posterior segment, left posterior segment on the right middle lobe. So this is decided by physiotherapist that which posture will be adopted for the postural drainage of the bronchial secretions in a lobe or a segment of a lung. Thank you very much.